Hey everybody, it's Gina here from Gina Makes It. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing a tutorial on how to make a journal, a flat journal that doesn't have a spine, um, out of a hanging file folder. So a couple days ago I shared a flip through of my garden journal slash planner and um, I asked if you guys maybe would like to see a tutorial and a lot of people responded that they did and so that's why I'm doing this. I am here to share how I made this and this is so incredibly easy that you're really not going to even believe it because <laughs> it's just super super simple. So um, as I said before so this is an open spine which allows me to take I've already started working in this since the last time. And I have to say, as an update, it works so well. It is so awesome because I can either work in it flat or I can take a page out. Um, I've developed a little board with all things that I need to do and little notes that I have to make. And it's just, it's awesome. I love it. So um, like I was saying, you can either work inside of the journal or you can pull the pages in and out. Um, they're easily put in they're kept together with some twine so you can add you can take away you can do whatever there's pockets there's all sorts of good stuff so today I am going to make a slightly smaller one this one is 8 by 10 um, I'm gonna make a eight a six by eight because I need something a little bit smaller I'm just gonna make a little notebook to jot down some things that I'm trying to keep track of so we're gonna start by uh, disassembling our hanging file folders. So these are the hanging file folders that I use. Now, since my last video, I went back into my closet <laughs> that has piles of paperwork that needs to be organized into our vertical cabinet. And I dug around and I found that I had a whole box of these hanging file folders that were never opened and so they were wrapped in plastic and I know that I bought them at the exact same time. I probably bought two boxes or something. Well the ones that were wrapped in plastic and that were never opened are totally fine. They are not weathered. They're not antiqued. Nothing has happened to the edges. They're totally fine. Air was not able to get to it so they're fine. But the ones that were hanging out that were like in use or just extra hanging out, you can see they discolored around the, the sides. Um, there's some rips in them and they just have some general antiquing, some natural antiquing that was done, I guess, because of the, the air was able to get to it. So that's something that you might think about if you have some in a package and you want it to sort of naturally now okay I don't think it's like gonna happen overnight <laughs> but you know you might want to take it out of the packaging I don't know I'm gonna use this one that is um, a little bit antiqued today so uh, the, fi the file folder has these metal bars in them and they're enclosed with this flap so the first thing that you're gonna do is just lift the flap. Now, I don't know if my flaps are coming up easier because like I said, they're old and the glue is kind of drying, um, but it's really, I it just, I flipped it up. And then I'm just going to lift up this and I've been throwing these out, but I know there's probably something that could be done with this, like scratch your back. Maybe. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of something, but I don't want to like become too crazy with hoarding things. So I'm trying to throw things out because I'm already starting to feel like I'm being buried alive. So um, I'm just gonna do the other side. And this is the, this flap is really important to our design. So this flap is what we're going to attach our internal um, notebook to. So here's that, I took that off and now I'm just going to throw it to the side. So now I'm going to cut this directly in half because I don't need it um, together like this because I'm trying to create an open spine. So let's see, what is the best way? Oh, you know what? I believe I just used scissors because it doesn't really matter to me. So if you have a paper cutter that can fit this, then by all means use it. I'm just going to use a pair of scissors to cut this in half. Okay, so now I need to trim it down to my size. And so, like I said, the one that I made before was um, uh, 8 by 10. So here it is. It's 8 by 10. And this one I'm going to make 
a six by eight. So I want my height to be eight and I want my six to be the width. So this is how it's going. I just keep trying to look because I just want to make sure. Yes. So this is going to be the, ins the one side. This is going to be the other side. So you can already start to see how we're starting to assemble this. So I'm going to trim my height first. So I'm going to take off however much I need to make eight. Um, so which side do I want? This side. So let's see, I'm going to go this way and I'm going to trim. I want it to be eight. And then I'm going to trim the side that doesn't have the flap. I'm gonna keep the flap intact and I'm gonna keep it flapped and I'm going to measure six inches from the edge of that crease where the flap is. I'm gonna keep it folded and then I'm going to trim it there. So there is my six by eight cover. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. Okay, okay. So this is going to be my flap now. So see that's it's together this way. So I'm going to measure eight from here. And I'm just gonna trim it like that. And that's garbage. And now I'm going to measure six because I want my width to be six. Okay, so now I have my front and my back. There we go. Okay, now let's trim our inside. So for the inside, so like our signature, I'm going to call it, because this is sort of what we're doing. We're creating signatures. So you can, you're going to need a piece of this um, to cover. Well, you don't have to cover it, but I did because I thought it looked nice. Now you can try and weave things in here. Let's see, these, yeah, see these, oh, these line up a little bit better than my other one did. Um, I don't know if that bothers you, the, the lining up. Now, why, this is a little bit off. So I just wanna make sure, um, let me go back and make sure that I've got eight inches. There we go. Because I want an even journal. was just a slight it was slightly okay there we go good all right so now I'm going to take my file folder and so all I had are these big huge like legal sized file folders so I want it to be a slightly smaller than six by eight because it's going to go on the inside so let's see I'm going to do like seven and three quarters by um, five and three quarters. So here is my, my little booklet for the inside. So we're ready to assemble and I told you this was super easy. <laughs> so basically we're going to hinge this flap onto this file folder, and then it's going to be glued on both sides so it becomes a booklet. So I'm going to show you. I am using my Fabri-Tac glue that refuses to come out of its container. So I just, in my last video, I showed you what I'm doing. I just let it sit in there and I'm using a brush, which actually might be a little bit better for this type of project um, because you'll get better coverage. But again, 
you will have to throw your brush away because I don't think you can wash off this glue after the amount, but you will get a nice coverage on it. Um, you know, so you know that it will be secured because you're being very precise with the with the paintbrush and you're able to get way down into those corners and up to the edge. So that is sort of a bonus for using the paintbrush. I'm not sure if it's an economical use of the glue, like if I'm using more glue or I don't know. So uh, now I'm just gonna press it down on the cover, lining it up. So now we have, whoops, my paper cutter just went flying off the chair. So now we have, half of our journal. So I'm just gonna press that down. Now I'm gonna do the other side. So it's gonna go right on there like that. So I'm going to take my glue and I am going to do the same thing that I did on the other side, on this side. This has a piece of file folder hanging on it. Now it, it'll be forever be on my finger. It'll never come off. Okay. The one thing I feel is you have to kind of move fast with this fabric tech because I feel like it, it dries quickly and so you just kind of have to move on the quicker side. So now I'm just going to apply this to the edge, the other edge, so you can see we have a spine here that is now open. It's not closed, but we've glued the front and the back cover onto each side. And if you didn't have a file folder, you can do this with, I mean, really anything. All you have to do is just create a fold, create a little flap. Okay, so now, there, we have, we have our book. So now really what we have to do is just add our pages. So for this, I am going to add some of this drawing paper that I have. Um, this I, 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 po or I posted. I um, linked in my last video where I actually just paged through this journal. I'm actually gonna get my bone folder. Okay, and I'm just going to Fold a couple just for the sake of demonstration because you remember I can add or take away whatever I want because that's the whole purpose of this journal. Like I wasn't joking when I said it was super simple. <laughs> this might be the most simple journal that I've ever created actually. It's just a matter of cutting in half, trimming and gluing. And now we're gonna tie some twine. Um, around the edges. So I'm also going to use some drawing paper. So at the craft stores, and this, I got this a long time ago, you can get those big, huge, giant packs of drawing paper. And that's what this was. And I used it in my other one. So it was this size, which is very large. And I cut it, I folded it into quadrants, and then um, I folded it in half. And so I folded it the wrong way the last time. So I'm gonna use to fit fully in my garden journal. So I'm gonna use it in this one instead. So I'm just gonna trim a couple of these down and I'm gonna make these um, even less than five and a quarter, um, five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. I'm gonna make it um, five and a half by seven and a half, just so it's a tiny bit smaller than my signature cover. So let's see, I did seven and three quarters for that. So I'm actually gonna do seven and a half here. And let's test it. Let's see if that's a good size. Yes, that's a very good size for me. And then I'm going to do, um, let's see, I did five and three quarters. So I'm gonna do five and a half. So, yes, to me, that that works quite well. Okay, now I'm just gonna trim up some more papers.
Okay, so. I'm going to put this on top. I'm going to do a couple of these. This. Put another one of these in here. So there is my signature. So I'm going to place it in here. I have a roll of twine that I'm going to use. And I am basically, let's see, will this fit? It looks like I, yeah. So this piece, I don't know, I cut it. It's, I'd say it is, well, I'm not going to guesstimate. Let me measure it for you. Okay, so this is about 28 inches. So all you do is find the middle, wrap it, and tie it. <laughs> That's it. This actually, this size um, twine is like perfect for this. So you can tie it in a knot, you can tie it in a bow, you can do whatever. Now, you don't really need to ever undo the knot because the pages sort of slip in and out on their own. So it's really up to you how you want to do it. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. Uh, the other one I did a little bit higher. Yeah, actually I did do it a little bit higher, but I did do it like this. The bow was a little bulky, so I'm just going to leave it like that for now and I am actually I am going to make it a little bit higher because I do like it a little bit on the higher side so I'm just going to yes move it up and I'm going to there we go and in fact I'm going to trim it too there we go and that's our there's our binding. So it sits nicely in between the two pages. Now, the last thing that you can do if you want, well, you could do a whole lot of things to this. For instance, you can round the corners, which I'm going to do. Because I feel like it kind of finishes it a little bit. Um, This one. Okay, this one was a little wonky because I was like super excited to do it. So let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you can also do the the insides of here. I'm just gonna do the outsides. Now, the one other thing that I did do that I am going to do on this is I'm going to cover this. Like I said, I tried putting twine and tried doing all sorts, but I just it wasn't wasn't my thing. So I thought, oh, you know what? I have this leftover um, like file folder, so I'm just going to trim it. And I am going to cover it. So now my paper cutter went flying a couple minutes ago, and here it is. So I, oh, it did go flying, and as it took flight, it lost its blade. Oh, here it is. Okay. Now I'm going to, where I marked it, I'm going to trim it. And then it's a slight trim on this side and I do see it right here. And so when I covered it with this and it's the perfect size, it sort of reminded me of like one of those composition notebooks. So I'm gonna do it again because I really like the way that it looks. I feel like it finishes it, um, really finishes it. So I'm just gonna take my glue and So some other things that you can do are you can add some pockets, um, which I'm going to do, I'm sure, because what kind of journal doesn't have pockets or notebook or anything like that. And now I'm just going to place it down directly on top of that. And I really feel like that finishes, it finishes it. 
I'm going to do it on this side too. Let's see. Will it work with that same piece? I think it might. So I'm going to mark it. Actually. I don't really think it needs to be trimmed down there. Let's let's do it and see what happens. Let's see, where is my mark? There it is. I'm gonna flip it so I can see it better. Okay. Let's see if it needs to be, actually, I feel like this side needs to be straightened a little bit. I might have, that might have been the side that like I cut with scissors, so it's a little wonky. Let's see if I can clean up that edge just a little bit without doing too much damage. There we go. That actually fits really well. So let's take our little brush. Oh, I'm running out of glue in my cap. And let's say I want that side down because that's like kind of a darker green. I want the light. I kind of want it to match so it looks like it was supposed to be there. So there's two different colors. There's like a deeper green, I think, on the inside. Maybe that's just because of the way that it aged. I don't know. There we go. And then we're just gonna place it down. And there, there it is. Now let's see, is that sticking out on the top? No. It's kind of sticking out a little bit on the bottom here. So I'm going to trim it with my scissors to, oh yeah, I remember doing this with the other one and this got a little tricky. Um, there we go, perfect. Meaning it was a little delicate in this area. Um, so you just have to be careful when you're doing this because you are coming up against that spine. So you just kind of want to eyeball it. And... There we go. Perfect. Okay. So that is the journal. Now, what else should I do since I have it here? Hey everybody. So I decided to decorate it. I wasn't going to, but I decided to because I do want to start using it right away. So I did something very quick. Um, didn't decorate it too heavily. So I just have a printable rose in the center and then I lined it with some coffee dyed masking tape, which if you are new, I just coffee dye masking tape on some wax paper and it acts very much like washi tape because it's been sort of wet and it loses some of that stickiness. So then I framed it with the with the masking tape and then I had some of this leftover um, trim from a couple pillows that I made a few days ago and I framed the picture with that. I did add a little sewing. You can't see it because the color of the thread is the same as the trim, but I did go ahead and do that and that's all I did for the cover. And then I added a pocket on the side here, I rounded the corners. Um, and then I also folded the side just to give it a little bit more room for stuff to go in. I tucked a few things in here that I know I'm gonna use. This is just some more of that masking tape. Added a few page toppers knowing that these pages can come out and I can rearrange them however I want. So that was just a little bit of this leftover trim. And then I have some twine that was left over and then just some more of the scraps of that masking tape. And I just thought that those three looked nice peeking out the top. And then on the back side, I just did a simple pocket and I just used the excess file folder 
And then I just stuck a few things in here that I knew once again that I was probably going to use. And I just added a butterfly that I fussy cut from the European Butterfly Digital Kit. And this is just some more masking tape. So that is your very easy, very utilitarian, very customizable um, spine free or open spine journal. So it lays flat. It is, um, you can add as many pages as you want. It is very versatile. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and um, I'd love to see pictures of the journals that you make if you want to tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. I would love that so much because I just love seeing what people make. So um, as always, thank you so much for watching and for supporting my channel. I really do appreciate it. I will see you next Sunday for Junk Journal with me. Bye.